Hey guys, how's it going? Been a couple days since we played this, figured we'd do a little bit more. Alright, things are looking good on the audio end, but as always, chat will let me know if I need to adjust accordingly. As I put my earbud back up. There we go. Very quick rundown for how this particular side mode works, which I'm sure that uh, people watching this on the on the VOD are probably tired of hearing it, but this is basically a quote-unquote side story to our Pokemon vs. Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Icarus is normally playing on actual hardware. She's not here today, it is just me. And I am playing on emulation as we only have one DS capture board. Today I am playing on the version that I am doing in the verses, Heart Gold, but I am playing on actual hardware. This is so that we'll be able to do the battling later, so basically I'm doing a second round of the game. If that sounds like cheating because I'm getting different natures and whatnot, don't worry, the rules do dictate you're able to breed for different IVs, natures, do your EV training differently, so none of that will be unfair. But what you will also notice is that we're not in our typical location here. I thought that line on the right was like a glitch on my end on the top right up there, but nope, it appears not. We are here because the Haircut Brothers are back in, and I would like them to work on my Eevee. Theoretically, depending on how far we get today, hopefully I will have fly, and so it will be easier to get back here, but I do want to try to get Eevee evolved, hopefully as soon as I can. I would say I made too many mistakes on working on evolving it in the actual verses, but I think it's just more of an issue of the nature of uh, how we record those and the fact that we do them in batches. I didn't take time to stop and go keep getting my Eevee taken care of between episodes, and I probably should do that on my other file and get working on it since I do have Fly there. I don't suppose this is available right now, is it? Now that I know it, if I say no, it's gonna get mad at me. I think Eevee's actually not a terrible choice for this. Yeah, we don't get to say it. Today's Tuesday, it is out today, all right. More than one Pokemon, you have to use Eevee the first one on your party. Yes, that is okay with me. There are the sport balls, all the basketballs, baseballs, footballs, and wiffle balls. There are no other balls used in sports. That's it. No golf balls, no bowling balls, nothing. It's just those four. Yeah, we get to work on the B sides today, which also means that chat will be in the uh, in the top right corner as well. I'll be able to read that more easily here than I would normally. We've also got Runaway on this EV, which will make escaping a lot easier rather than potentially running. I'd say potentially running into issues of EV being too low, low, low level by comparison to what we find. I think by this point we're probably good on that. I think EV is high enough level to where that wouldn't be a problem anyway. Let's see, level 16, level 17. Yeah, it probably won't be an issue. There might be a couple of 18s in there, but even if that was the case, now we don't have to worry about it. So that's a nice little bonus. Much like with the main game, there is one Pokemon in particular I'm looking for in here, and that is Scyther. But I will come back for Pinsir as well. I'll, I've kind of ultimately decided, and I talked about this last episode on this side, of what I was going to do about the Pokedex. I think I'm going to try to complete it as much as I can for the current gen we're playing, so in this case, Johto. But I'm not gonna do National Dex, that's a bit much. But at least having the Johto Dex done could like, you know, hey, that was a lot faster than last time. <laughs> I was here for most of the 20 minutes looking for one of these last time. But I do think that that's a good opportunity to get to see every Pokemon, especially since I'm actually recording my version this time. We at least get to like, see them all to some degree, rather than being like, yeah, here's a couple that just won't ever get shown because they never came up here or in a later gen where it was just easy to get them, easy to raise them, whatever. Alright, that should 
should be about as good as we can hope for. He doesn't have any status ailment moves, so this is what we're gonna have to stick with for the time being. If I don't catch it, I'll just turn uh, turn the machine off and back on, and we'll give it another shake. Provided that there's not some in-game feature where it's like, "Hey, we noticed you reset your data, and now you can't play the catching game for the next 24 hours." There is a Pokemon version of Mr. Rossetti, but we'll see. Yeah, these guys are not the easiest thing to capture, but I knew that going in. It also doesn't help that you're required to use the... not Safari Balls, but they're basically Safari Balls. If you could just come in here with Ultra Balls, it would be too easy, right? because they're all like level 14 to 18 or like somewhere in that realm. So it wouldn't be too terribly hard to catch with an Ultra Ball. Even something with a low catch rate would have a pretty good shot of being caught by an Ultra Ball at low health. The Pokemon broke free. It sure enough did. And it used False Swipe. That's nice. Nope. Well, I guess you win then, Scyther. Or you could just leer again, because I can't, uh, can't access my bag. I like to do it. It's like, I get why they don't let you use your, um, don't let you use all the extra balls you have. You think they'd let you, like, heal your Pokemon, though. Though, if all of, if all it can do attack-wise is false swipe, then we can't possibly lose at this point, barring a struggle showdown, which we've already seen in the project, but nope, we're good. Which is good, because I also didn't want you to faint, so this works out quite well. It slashes through grass with its sharp size, moving too fast for the human eye to track. And with that, we are going to retire from the boat catching game. Yeah, four minutes instead of, like, twelve. I think it took three times as long to do that last time. Alright. Third is Abby, who caught a potus. Placing second is Don, who caught a pincer. I feel like that probably should have won, unless it's me. But then again, last time I saw this, it was... Who caught a Butterfree? I mean, I personally would go by, like, what's harder to find and what's harder to catch. I would assume the guy with the pincer won, but that's fine. The prizes here aren't really what I care about. It was looking for the... the Scyther. Nope, I don't need a nickname for it. Well, congrats to everyone. With beautiful colors makes it easier to win. I don't know if that's true, actually. Yeah, exactly. He got a Pokemon he wanted, so... I was kind of expecting one of them to be like, Oh, awesome, I won, or something like that. But nope, I guess they didn't. But again, we got the Scyther, and that's the important thing. It'll be one less thing I've got to worry about later. I gotta think between Pinsir and Scyther, like, surely one if not both of those are probably a you-can-only-catch-it-there type of thing. So every single Pokemon game has at least one Pokemon that's only available in one area, nothing else. Like, Gen 3's got Ralts, where it's only Route 102. Nice, got through there without much damage. I don't know if they fully healed my Eevee, but I'm going to go ahead and do it again just to be absolutely sure. I guess technically while I was in Golden Run, I could have checked Eevee's happiness. I know Zubat, or uh, Golbat rather, is very, very close to getting her evolution because she's in, lot, in that area where her happiness is high enough. Was I going to check? Oh, I was going to check the town map. That's right. Yeah. So our current destination is here to Olivine because we have done Ecrutique City. At least I'm pretty sure we have. Let's double check that. Uh, yes, we have. 
So ideally, since I do need to be heading to work in about three hours, ideally we're going to get two badges. I'm going to try to keep that the norm, but bear in mind, obviously, as the game goes farther along, getting the badges is more difficult and not just because of obtaining the, or just not just because you're fighting gym leaders that are tougher. Getting there, doing all the side quests, the Team Rocket stuff, all your favorites, really. But regardless whether we get the two badges or not, we'll go as far as we possibly can. You know what, I'll give Eevee a shot at this. We'll see how it goes. Well, you're gonna have to have your attacks connect first and foremost, otherwise I'm not gonna be able to help you much. Yeah, if that rage is building, then we should probably just switch out here. Three, four, oh, only three. That seems to be happening a lot, both on this and the practice one, as those two to five moves are only hitting three times. Yeah, I'm gonna say no and just let this fight finish as is. I'm gonna make a quick change to Eevee and put Tackle in the front there, because I'm not gonna be using Growl or whatever it was. I think it was Growl in the front, but I'm not going to be using that as much. So we'll just skip on over it. first. That was another thing I guess I could have gone back and done is work on the Apricorns, but I don't really need all the specialty Pokeballs that badly, so I'm okay with waiting until we get Fly to take care of that. Alright. Let's put that in the front, and that's the only attack move we're going to have for a little bit here until we get Bite. Once we've got that, raising EV level-wise is going to be a lot more manageable. I thought for a minute I'd already fought this guy since he didn't like turn around when I ran towards him, but... I guess we're good. Let's see how this goes. Ooh, that was with a critical. Yeah, we're probably better off switching here. Suffice to say, unless, I mean, granted, I haven't looked up the info for this yet, but suffice to say, whenever I'm raising the Umbreon that I'm going to be using for my final team, I'll probably be focusing on getting its happiness maxed before it levels up even once. And then, of course, I'll have it go in a few fights to get to level 2, and then it will evolve then. I'm assuming as early as possible is best for the, uh the EV evolutions, but I'm not 100% sure, to be perfectly honest. That is something I'll have to look up in the future. I know in most cases, for at least the, the typical Pokemon, that your best bet is to do that, of just evolving it as soon as you can. But it's not always the case, so I'll have to keep an eye out for that. Man, don't be going to paralyze me. How about you get set on fire? Nope, that's not gonna work. Oh, you had two, but I thought you only had one. Well, it didn't matter anyway, because I didn't get to attack. Right, fine, we'll hit you with this instead. Man, how many... It's like, first you're gonna go withdraw your Pokemon. It's not very effective, huh? Yeah, I'm sure. First you go withdraw your Pokemon, then you disable my moves, then you heal them. You're like an actual trainer here. Yeah, of 
course you're going to send in Flaffy. You don't have any choice now. Oh, it's confused and paralyzed. Alright, well, in that case... It became healthy, as it would often say in most games. Alright, now that none of your little shenanigans with Parafusion is here... There we go. You might have paralyzed me, but you didn't succeed in the end, and that's the important thing. So you can battle that way. Yeah, and apparently you can battle with status effects. Some boy gives me something I'll share with you. Does that make me sound ungrateful? I mean, you said that they give you too many things. I don't know if I'd say it's ungrateful. In some cases, it's just like, I don't have a use for this, so I'm going to pass it on to somebody that might actually have a use for it, so... Mm, I'd say no. Hi, I'm back. And away we go. <clears throat> I'm hoping I won't have to run back and heal too many times, but like whenever you've got a town close by, you can save on not using your items, so kind of have to. I've been watching uh, NCS, Nintendo Capri Sun. I've been watching his playthrough of Sapphire again, which was his first Pokemon game period, so it was kind of interesting to watch him discover everything that, you know, people that have played and seen for a long time. But he had mentioned that a lot of, like, when he was doing off-screen grinding, uh, he would just run back to the, the PC and heal for that very reason. Trying to save as much as he could on not spending items, which is a good idea. I think that's probably one of the more underrated strategies, at least for items you can commonly buy, like potions, and people just run through them super fast. And while you get to the point late game where money is basically no object, at the early part of the game, that actually could cause you a problem, particularly if you're going to be catching everything that you run across and inevitably failing with a couple Pokeballs and catching. So, you're going to be spending a lot on Pokeballs, so... You gotta make sure you still got that money for other stuff. Should do it, provided we can survive. And then we miss. Perfect. This is what I mean about if it doesn't have 100% accuracy, I'm just simply not interested in it. Because even at 95, it will still miss. Alright, that should hopefully get us to 18. Oh, yeah, that should be plenty experience. I was thinking it was going to be in the mid 300s. Problem is, I do remember now what level we get bite, and it's not till 29. It's a very long ways away. Yep, if I need to go back to town, I will do that. Thanks for spending my money, Mom. Love you. It's a weird case of only because I have Eevee in the front. If I had somebody that was more effective in the front, like Wild or, or Golbat, I would continue to challenge every single fight. Yeah, we're probably better off switching here. We'll switch into Golbat, see if it'll 
evolve on a level up if it's close. Oh, it's not close at all. But that's okay, we can still knock this thing out. We might be better off doing the old bait and switch strategy for the time being. I'm sure it will be loads of fun. I can't wait to chat with you all the time. I'm definitely not going to just ignore every time you call me. Poor kids. Alright. As far as I know, was coming out of date with a new entertainment option. I decided to go overseas and learn the technology and the state of the art. So it might be more than a coincidence. Why do we register each other? You'd be calling as far as I was open before I call anyone else. Do you want to register? Sure. I've taken a look at what's in the Safari Zone, and there's one thing in there I would really in particular want, but it would be like having on my team, but not my final team type of thing. Uh, and if you know anything about my brand, you can just look up what Pokemon in the Safari Zone, you'll spot it and go, oh, that's what it is. I should work on planting the berries and stuff like that to get this place back up and running because Moo Moo Milk is a pretty good healing item. I've always found it kind of weird that, barring stuff like that, there's not really a great option for anything between Super and Hyper Potion. The closest you get is like a Lemonade, which is 80, and that's not too close. So I feel like the Moo Moo Milks are a pretty good compromise at 100. Quite often, you kind of get stuck in that middle area where you need to heal, like, 130, so 50 is not going to cut it, but spending a Hyper Potion on that seems like too much. I think this person had two Pokemon, I'm pretty sure. Switch. I should be using Wild, not Golbat here. In particular because I also know coming up decently soon that Wild's not going to be too terribly useful in an area where there's a lot of water Pokemon coming up, so... But the problem in this particular fight is this is also a water Pokemon, so it's not going to be too terribly strong against it either. But I'll have to remember that if it's not a water water Pokemon that's being sent out that I should switch over to Wild. Like, ideally, I would like to be able to use it in the, the fifth gym that you tackle. I'm phrasing that weirdly because the next town has a gym in it, but it's actually gym six. You have to go and get a thing, and you do gym five while you're there, and then go back to gym six. It'll be really useful in six, so I should be using it as well in five. Hi. I just got back to Olivine's. I'm out of Pokemon Bell. You got back to... You're not in Olivine, dude. You're kind of near it, I guess, but... Right, back to Golbat we go. How far along is it? It's about probably a quarter of the way. I think it's a fair wager that we will probably have Crobat by the end of this play session. Eevee I'm not completely sure about, but Golbat I'm pretty sure will evolve. Provided it doesn't keep falling asleep. Here, wake up. I'll switch. There we go. Okay, so he's got at least one that's not a water. That's good. I will accept that. So hopefully everybody is doing well on this somehow July 30th. I don't know how it's almost August, but it is almost August of 2024 at the time of this recording. Or live stream, rather. 
I guess it is technically a recording if you're watching it on the VOD, though. It does not feel like August is almost here. We've only got like a few weeks before school starts back up, which doesn't matter for me, because for those that don't know, I'm already graduated from high school and university. I've graduated... Oh gosh, uh, by the end of this year, I graduated fall of 19, so by the end of the year, it'll be five years. Whoa, that's crazy, but that is apparently the case, somehow. Crab, he's trying to look at me funny, so I'm just gonna take it out here. This is, uh, Krabby is one that I'm planning on picking up, not for my HM, or not for my normal team, but it will be an HM user. I should have kept that list open. I might actually do that real quick. Take a quick mute here and reopen some tabs. There we go. I did want to keep an eye on that. Krabby is, let's see, it can learn Strength, Surf, Whirlpool, and Rock Smash, but I did find another set here that could probably work. So I can get Surf, Strength, Whirlpool, and Waterfall on one, and then Cut, Fly. No, it would be Surf, Whirlpool, Waterfall, Rock Climb. And then cut, fly, strength, and rock smash on the other. And that would mean that I would only have to have two, because I think there's only eight. Don't quote me on that. I think there's only eight TMs. So you have, in order to have them all, you'd have to have a minimum of two. But if you could get it with exactly two, that would obviously be the most preferable. So that's what I will try to do. But of course, I need to figure out where those Pokemon are. There's one. Oh, it's in a lot of places, actually. Okay. Uh, as for that one... Oh, that's actually not easy to get. Maybe I'll figure it out at a later date. I don't think that is going to be too big of an issue in this episode. It might come into play later, but for the time being, I think we'll be mostly okay. I'm honestly surprised there that Thunder Wave did not come my way, but I appreciate that it did not. Let's be friends. I figure nobody who likes Pokemon can be a bad person. Uh, sure, we'll go with that. We know that's not true both in-universe and out-of-universe, but... Oh, well. Got the female Pikachu. Yeah, expect to see in particular in this episode quite a few trainer battles. Not just because of this area, but namely because of the lighthouse. <laughs> I'd forgotten how many trainers were in there until we had done, uh, and we'd actually gone and proper started the verses. I didn't feel like there were that many whenever I did my original practice file. But man, in Versus, I was like, when am I going to get to the top of this tower? They're just... It's crawling with them. There's like 30 trainers in there. It's insane. I actually should count and see how many there were. Oh. Hi, Mom. Did you spend my money again? Yeah, you sure enough did. Well, luckily I'm in a town right now, so... I guess I'll go see what she got me. I'm going to guess it's going to be some sort of berry that I didn't even know existed. 
Oh, hi. What are you doing here, Silver? You again. There's no need to be alert. I don't bother with wimps like you. Speaking of weaklings, the city's gym leader isn't here. It's supposedly taking care of a sick Pokemon at the lighthouse. Heh, <laughs> boo-hoo, just let sick Pokemon go. Pokemon that can't battle is worthless. Wow, what a dick. Jeez, man. Admittedly, Silver is, like, one of the rival characters I remember the least as a whole. Like, I just remember him being a jerk, but that's about it. Oh, well. I think on my practice file I got up to beating him in Victory Road. I don't think I actually took on the Elite Four in that run, but... Now, let's go find that dude that I'm looking for and that will have the fishing rod. Oh, that's right, he is Giovanni's son. I forgot about that. Alright, what do you got? The Yachi Berries. Well, that was the first one I got called about. What was the second one? The Silk Scarf. Oh, I actually know what that is. Never mind. I was proved wrong. I'd say we could put that on our Eevee, but since I'm trying to get a happy happiness evolution, it would be better off keeping the, the bell on it for now. But... Nope. Not in here. Is it this one? Yeah, here he is. Oh, nope, that's not it either. I mean, I could trade you a Krabby for a, a Voltorb. I don't think Voltorb's too terribly hard to come by, though. But maybe it is, or it's also possible they're trying to help you with the gym, maybe? Here we go. I would like to face the sea and... No, I'd like to face away from the sea and also fish. I want to cast the rod out and have it go up in the air and behind me and land in the water. Let's take a look real quick. Yeah. We'll go ahead and move Machop over. That was also one that I traded for, mostly just to show off, hey, if you're having trouble with Whitney and her mill tank, you can get that in Goldenrod by trading for a Drowsy, which is right outside of that town. Yeah, I'll go ahead and put him up. The other important question before I decide to go hunting for that crappy is... Yeah, that should probably be enough, hopefully. If not, I'll grab some more, but I feel like six should hopefully be enough. We'll see, I guess. Hi. Oh, are you not going to let me... Oh, do I need to go and get Surf? I thought I had it already. I was pretty sure I did. Oh, I forgot to go pick it up. Well, at least it won't be too far of a walk back there. Plus, that's getting happiness points, so I'm not too terribly disappointed by that. There doesn't appear to be anything in the grass over there. This is always the fun part of, like, kind of running around between routes, is after you've knocked out all the trainers, you can just get through here super easily. It's so much faster than when you're originally making that trek. And just like that, we're back. I could have sworn we did this already, but I guess not. Yep, this is the dance theater. Yep, that dumbass is in here dancing his head off like a maniac. 
she's trying to do like a traditional proper dance and he's just here headbanging. I don't know what he's doing, like the Macarena, maybe. Yo, um, you need to you need to get back in your seat. There's always that one person that's had like a little too much to drink. Maybe maybe thought he could be a backup dancer in that exact moment. Oh, what a poor little boy. <laughs> and away he goes. Pretty sure that critical hit was not necessary. Looks like I lost. Yeah, it looks like you did. Looks like you sucked. You made me look like a villain. Uh, well, you made yourself look like a moron, so villain is probably uh, a step up in titles for you personally. You were so courageous. Honestly, if anybody could have beaten the gym leader here, they absolutely could have beaten that guy, like, no question. Even going through the verses, I was noticing, too, because I got, I, we'd gone past the Rocket Grunt hideout, I'd noticed, in particular. Maybe it was intentional, maybe not. It almost felt like I was going out of order, even though I wasn't. But I feel like it was intentional story-wise. Like, the 5th and 6th gym leaders, way harder than all of the rocket grunts in that base put together. Like, the worst the rocket grunts did was just drain the power points and all my moves. They're just way, way weaker than both gym leader 5 and 6 by comparison. Not just with their team comp or anything, like, level-wise, they're really weak, too. But like I said, that's probably intentional story-wise, because, you know, they're Team Rocket, they're not known for being particularly strong. The biggest advantage they have is there's just a lot of them. I'm gonna buy ten of these specifically to get the Premier Ball. And no other reason. Alright, let's see if that dumbass will let me go past now. Yep, okay, he'll let me go past. Perfect. I am going to clear out the lighthouse first, because I need that experience for getting into the fighting... Well, not for getting into the fighting gym, but for having a better shot at them. See what we got. Hey, first try. Same level, too. Same level as the one I caught in my practice file, that is. Yeah, we're probably okay to... Sw I mean, we can switch into wild. He'll do less damage with him. Doing Pokemon Y, Route 2 Pokemon only. I'm trying to think what's on Route 2 out of curiosity. Ooh, that might not have been such a great thing that I got burned, but that's alright. We'll go with a Great Ball. I was doing a randomizer waiting for everybody in my workstation to leave, because I usually work on everything better without an audience at work last night. So I did a randomizer of Emerald, and man, the starting Pokemon it gave me were not very good. It gave me... Oh, what did it give me? It gave me Sneasel, which... I could not evolve because I was on an emulator and uh, having to trade it and all. Uh, Apom, which Ambipom's not available, not that I would have picked that anyway. And what was the third one it gave me? It was also pretty bad. It was just not a particularly good set, whatever it was. It was definitely not as fortunate as my last run. 
Or especially my first one where I found my favorite Pokemon of all time in Route 1 of all things, which is a Gen 3 one, but I mixed them up so they could appear in any routes. So the fact that it appeared in the first route made it pretty, pretty easy. Bellby, Zigzagoon, Caterpie, Fletchling, Pidgey, and Scatterbug. Eh. I mean, at least you get a full, full set of six. Usually a lot of the earlier routes don't have that many. They usually have like three, maybe four. Alright, let's go ahead and add that Surf so I don't forget and sit there wondering why I'm just staring at the water. Deleting those four moves. I mean, technically, if I end up using Krabby, all four moves are going to get deleted here, but... And sure, we could go surfing around now, but there's experience in the lighthouse to be gained, and I want it. Kingler with crab hammer. Yeah, I've already got my uh, my team selected for doing the the proper verses here. The three you see on the bottom of the screen are ones that I'm going to be using on my final team. Not the ones that I have specifically, obviously I'll be breeding for better natures and stuff like that. But it will be ultimately a Typhlosion, a Crobat, and an Umbreon. But the other three I will probably ultimately keep a secret. Like I might have ones that I'm using on my battle team to get through the game. But the other three I'm going to keep hidden since... We're doing a, a versus, and this is an alt file since I'm playing on emulation so that Icarus can play on actual hardware. So now I'm actually playing on actual hardware since this is a DS capture board. Attack. Ah, oh, full restore. Weak. Weak. Don't be one of those guys that just spams that. It's bad enough I'll have to deal with that from the Elite Four later. Dragonite. I mean, for me, sadly, it will not be Dragonite. One of the rules that we have in place, because Icarus is playing through, in her case, Soul Silver rather than Heart Gold, uh, for the first time, is we're not allowed to use repeats from uh, any of our previous teams, because we did fire Red Leaf Green as well. But since I have the additional practice, I'm only allowed to use Gen 2 Pokemon. Which, both Eevee and Golbat in this case are allowed, because they're going to evolve into a Gen 2 Pokemon. So as long as whatever I'm using, the final evolution is a Gen 2, then it's still within bounds. Because limiting me to Gen 2 is already limiting me quite a bit, and not being able to use anything that would uh, evolve into or evolves from would make it go from a small pool to an extremely small pool, because there's really not that many. A lot of the stuff that got evolutions or pre-evolutions was stuff that came from Gen 2, like Pichu and Golbat and all those. So while I do want it to be fair, I do want to actually, like, be able to <laughs> have more than just being like, okay, well, I've got essentially, like, 50 options here, and I don't want to use too many of the same type, so it might lock me in a little bit too much. That said, I'm, I'm quietly confident in the team that I've ultimately chosen. I have not picked out the moves for everything on my team yet, but I have picked out the team in particular that I'm going to be using. I did do the same thing for Fire Red Leaf Green, and I was very happy with the team that I ultimately got there. Without spoiling it for Icarus in one episode, I went through them just to see exactly how strong they were, because it's been a while. It's been, like, several years since we did Fire Red Leaf Green. And I've worked on them since then, so I'm sure it was probably closer to, like, maybe two years since I had turned that file on. But regardless, seeing how strong that they actually were was very, very nice. It's a reminder that I did do things correctly. 
That's was essentially my first time ever actually doing like proper breeding for correct nature, looking for the proper IVs, uh, doing the proper EV training. That's the first time I've lost in a while. Well, my dude, you must have not battled in quite a while. Oops, that's the wrong bag. There we go. I'm gonna try to keep track of how many trainers in here. So that's two, this is three. What are you doing to stand around here and gawk? Like, dude, I just got here. Why am I, like, being accused of loitering? I might be able to take on this person, potentially. Oh, well, maybe not. He did the work for me. I didn't even have to sacrifice a turn to switch out. He just straight up did it for me. To be fair, if he did it once, there's a pretty good chance he's gonna do it again. We'll see, I guess. Well, maybe not. He's using other stuff. This is the Bird Keeper equivalent of the Fisherman that uses all magic art. which, granted, Pidgey is definitely better the magic harp. Probably not compared to like final evolution or anything, but at least for first evolution, yeah, it's way, way better. Obviously got tons more options here. You can do it, faux Pidgey. There we go. In fact, he didn't manage to one-shot something that low level by comparison, it was a little bit sad. <laughs> Alright, who are we sending out now? Golbat, alright. I do love the concept of, like, forcing a Pokémon back onto the team of, like, trainer thinking that they were so smart of being able to outsmart you and sending out something else, and then, like, while you've got a trainer training a weak Pokemon, it, like, sends out, like, a moderate, or it, uh, sends away a moderately weak Pokemon, and then it pulls out someone's, like, level 100 Charizard or something, and they just realize they've made a gross miscalculation. <laughs> hit. That's nice. I'm just gonna get you with a regular hit. I know Eevee does get quick attack in here somewhere between Bite and where it is now. But as for where specifically that is, I'm not actually sure. Though again, once I get fly, like, I'll probably start... I wouldn't... Well, I might do some off-screening stuff, but we'll, we'll see. Alright, trainer number four. Because it's one of those things of, like, this is just actually going through the main story. Granted, you don't have to fight every single trainer or everything, but doing stuff like all the breeding and whatnot, that might not be as enjoyable to watch. I don't know. But also, in due fairness, this 
uh, set will always be behind the main verses, simply due to the fact I don't want to get ahead of where we are in the verses, which I don't think that's going to happen. I've cleared the seventh gym, uh, at least as of right now, on verses, so. Even if I were to do exactly as far as I thought I got with getting six badges, I would still be behind, so. But I do want this one to kind of be slightly behind at any given time, because one, that will tell me what to prepare for on this file. And two, if I got ahead on this file, it would to some degree spoil. I know I did a practice run, but that was a little while ago. As opposed to doing them literally at the... like, within the same time frame. No, I don't want to switch out. I want to keep what I got. Gentleman Preston, huh? So, like, Preston plays. If there was ever a YouTuber that hammed it up for the cameras. I do think his content's pretty decent. I do. He's just a... I don't know. It's in that... It always is, like, striking that line of, like, actually good content versus trying way too hard. Must train... Indeed, you must train some... The good thing about fighting these trainers in the lighthouse, at least, is... As my mom now knows by spending my money, uh, they do give pretty good money here. A lot of the gentlemen and like other quote unquote rich trainers are usually here. I don't suppose I have any like regular potions here, do I? No, that's alright though. Number six. I tend to bring her back. Like, could you have phrased that in a less creepy way? Like... That's like a, I'm trying to take them back home whether they want to come with me or not. Kind of creepy. Switch in the gold bat for this one. I don't need that rollout getting out of control. And it missed, so that's good. I'm genuinely curious to see if the next level for Golbat will be enough to get her to evolve. On Swagger. Eh, I'm not super big on that one. I I get why the whole, like, raising the attack sharply thing exists, but you're, of course, gambling by doing that, because if they do break through the confusion, you just raised their attack for them, their physical attack. Granted, if they're a special attacker, then it doesn't really matter. Alright, Trainer 7. See how Eevee can hold up on its own here. Mm, not quite enough, it seems. Yeah, we should be able to switch in a while. I should have checked this particular Cyndaquil at the times, IVs, but I feel like I've got a pretty good one this time around. But it's hard to really say, and I'm sure by comparison to once I get, like, a, a final one bred and raised and all that, it's gonna be well and above. I'm curious, though. What are we looking at? 76 health, 52 attack, 39 defense, 49 special attack, 43 special defense, and 52 speed. 
And my alarm going off. Oh, it's you. So speed and attack are tied for its current highest stat, not counting health, of course. Because I know that, kind of like with... This isn't really spoilers, because I'd already called them for my team in Fire and Leaf Green. But kind of like with Charizard, there is definitely that option of... Like, do you want a physical attacker, Typhlosion? Do you want a special attacker? Or do you want a mixed attacker? Because Charizard was kind of the same way. You could honestly do either. And while I won't spoil what I did for Charizard in that regard... If I did so happen to choose either physical or special, maybe I'll do the opposite for Quilava slash Typhlosion. And if I went for Mixed Attacker, then maybe I'll do the same. No, I would probably do something different, regardless. I think I would do something different. Regardless of what I picked for Charizard. Because otherwise I feel like they'd be a little too similar. Got an Ether Ether. Ether spelling, or either pronunciation, rather, is uh, acceptable for me. I do need to pick up more potions, though. Uh, Eevee's going to be getting switched out, so we'll, we'll do this. Alright, battle eight, I believe. I'd say with any luck we might potentially be able to get to a Typhlosion today, but I'm not completely sure about that. Only because in the main file that I've got, I mean we still have nine levels to go for one. But for two in the main file that we have for Versus, it wasn't until literally at, right after I cleared the seventh gym that it evolved, so... Level 22, by any chance is this quick attack? Oh, thank you. I'll get rid of Tail Whip, I don't need it. That will be slightly better than Tackle, both for priority and also a slight bit more damage and a slight bit more accuracy. It's not the be-all, end-all, and I will still probably have to be switching it out for the remaining levels that it takes before it evolves. Or until he gets to 29. But at this point, I will take anything, and something is still better than nothing. I guess the one upside, too, about doing the happiness evolutions, now that I think about it, is if, if I do them in tandem with raising the eggs, I'd be getting a lot of steps for it as well. Which is one way to bring up the happiness is having it be the uh, per the Pokemon following you around on the field. I'll have to try to remember that. Of the first one that I should probably work on breeding for the optimal Umbreon is probably my Eevee first. And then work on the remaining ones. Yeah, I feel like when it comes to the, the breeding part of just going back and forth on screen, that I will probably do off screen. I do know where to catch a Ditto now, because Icarus actually ran into one. But on both my practice file and the versus file, and then also this file, when going through that route, I don't think I ever ran across a Ditto. It just didn't come up for whatever reason. But I do know that they are accessible now. By the time I get Fly, of course, they will still be accessible. Nobody on this floor. Oops, I didn't want to go back down the ladder. Nope, get back up there. Put that thing back where it came from more, so help me. Sailors are both kind and strong. Ah, so that's why they use the term swearing like a sailor. Because you're swearing kindly, or swearing strongly would be more accurate.
is blessing the rains. Yeah, I probably should switch to Golbat only because I'm out of super potions here. I will definitely remember to stock up on those before continuing onward. Man, don't be putting me to sleep. I could use a full heal, but I'm okay with just trying to power through this. Hopefully it won't be too bad. You can always waste a turn doing Rain Dance. There we go. Right, turn four. There we go. Perfect. Trainer number 10. I mean, I knew I was being over... I was being a little too generous when I said there was like 30 trainers in here. But at least, th at least they did get to double digits. Adios, Machop. You will be missed. knocked out before he tries to immediately go with... No, he didn't go with Hypnosis. Alright, well, I will accept that. I'm glad your double slap hit three times. I did not realize that double meant three. Figured that was triple, but, you know. Either or. I never claimed to be smart. glad, though, that I turned the animations off and, like, set the tech speed to fast and all that. That was probably part of the reason that I caught up to Icarus so quickly, is, like, she learned from the the first playthrough we did of, like, oh, I need to turn the tech speed to fast. Because even though it's not a race, like, we, we somewhat treat it like that, but not really. But one of the things that she does not do is turning off the battle animations. Which is cool, because then you get to, like, see the battle animations, which I do think are good. But in terms of going through quickly, uh, mostly through Fire Emblem, if there's anything I've learned, that it's that turning the battle animations off will make the game go by way faster. Thank you for unlocking that door so that I don't have to go all the way back down the long way. Appreciate that. Hey, now I've got a super potion. That means I don't need to buy any more. No, I'm just kidding. I'm still going to go buy some. So for those just listening or that have not really followed the story going on here, since we're heading to Gym 5, they said the gym leader's not here, they're at the lighthouse taking care of a sick Pokemon, so we battle their way to the top of the lighthouse and ran into her there, of course, and she is asking for us to go get medicine for the Pokemon because she can't leave it alone. So that's why we're moving on to the next town. Hello, I need a couple of these. And by a couple, I mean, like, that should probably be plenty. How am I doing on revives? I got two. We'll grab one more. Like I said, I always want to keep some of these on hand. Alright. Let's heal and move on. Like I said, unfortunately, this is going to be the section where Quilava is not going to get much play, simply due to the fact that we're going to be going 
through an area where there's going to be a lot of water Pokemon. Both by the trainers and in the wild encounters, so... Sadly, it will be stuck waiting for the next gym to come up. There might maybe still be, like, a trainer out here on the beach that doesn't use... Nope, not even that. So this is the Battle Frontier, and I'm not going in there. I might be crazy, but I haven't gone that far off the deep end yet. Hi! You have to warm up before going into the water. That's basic. Yeah, you have to practice swimming on the beach. Not in the ocean, in the beach. <laughs> just sit there in the sand, just kicking your legs and swinging your arms around like a chimpanzee. good news is, even barring the whole not being able to use Quillab in this area, at least with the Golbat that I can use, it's got a pretty good array of stuff to do between confusing and two different move types. But since Eevee is only two levels higher and was losing to stuff six, that it was six le to seven levels higher, then I'm obviously not going to be... Too terribly convinced that it can win these fights against the Tentacool, so we'll keep switching it out as needed. Once it gets bite, it will be viable. Because, like, we went through the same thing with Golbat, like, when it was a Zubat, of, like, when it initially just has a staunch and leech life, it can't do that much. But the minute it got bite, everything changed. And speaking of everything changing... There we go. Your Zo or your Golbat has evolved into Crobat. Very, very nice. That means I also only have one happiness evolution I gotta worry about from now on, which is another plus. Let's take a look at this boy. Nice. Very, very nice. So yeah, speed and attack. Lowest to special attack, but that's fine. It's using two moves that are physical. Did not mean to go back into that menu. And I think in-game we've hit Knight, too, so if Eevee does evolve by any chance, then we should be okay. I'm gonna double-check that real quick. There we go. While that screen is loading. Times of day night starts at 8 p.m. So yeah, it's still got an hour to go, but if it tries to evolve between now and then, we could of course just stop it from doing that. That's one of the upsides to doing our recording sessions later in the day for actual verses, is since I'm going for an Umbreon, I don't have to deal with the same issues I would if I was going for an Espeon, where I would potentially have to do it off-camera. On to Pluck, which I know uses the user's hold item if they've got like a berry or whatever, but I don't remember how much damage it does, or if it does more if they do have an item. While I do like having at least a flying type on my team, predominantly for fly in the overworld, I usually don't use pluck that much. Wing attack or air slash is usually nice and simple if I'm going for a basic, accurate, and strong move.
Adios, Tentacool. That was one I believe, like, for a little while I considered using on my Fire Red Leaf Green team. I think I talked about that. Next time that I, like, put my team together, I really should, like, have an alternate list showing off later. Like, these were ones I considered using and ultimately just decided not to. I'm sure if I looked at a list of Gen 1 Pokemon, I probably would remember them. Once I actually had the list physically in front of me and being like, yeah, that was one I considered and didn't use. That was one I considered and didn't use. Be it because they either just didn't synergize with the team I had, I already had a Pokemon of that type, or just stat-wise they weren't very good. I know one of the ones that I was considering initially for Gen 3 was potentially, uh... Oh, why am I blank? Carvana. There we go. Carvana and Sharpedo. I couldn't remember Carvana for some reason, but... Took a look at its stats, and yeah, it's not very good. Should be going for Quick Attack and do that extra damage. Even if it is to a precious little shoulder. They're so adorable. In. I was like, I don't think it's going to have as much luck against this War Turtle. Eevee is still tragically at that point of like, if you're considering if it's going to have a shot at winning or not, the answer is probably no. Like, you have to be, have pretty high confidence that it's going to be able to succeed. But if you're not more than, like, 90% confident, maybe don't bother uh, trying to have it actually defeat the Pokemon, just have it out there to get the experience and then leave. For anybody wondering of, like, why, why level up the Eevee when you should just be trying to get its happiness to full, which you can do without battling, it's unfortunately a case of one of the quote-unquote faster ways to do it is simply by having it level up. Level up is one of the ways to increase happiness. That said, if you do have the time, which again, I will probably do off screen whenever getting to the, the breeding part of it, you could literally just run around with it and it would take a really long time, but you could run around with it, have the little bell on and just keep giving it uh, the haircuts from the Haircut Brothers. And that would probably be enough to where once you've got it high enough up, you could just level it up the one time and then there you go. You have an Umbreon at level 2. You could absolutely do that. But for the context of like actually making progress here and the fact that it won't be the final Umbreon that I'll use on my team, it's just an Umbreon I'm using right now, then uh, it should probably be fine. Because this game is a longer game, though, what I might end up doing is breeding that Eevee and getting it to an Umbreon faster. And then we can kind of see the the difference between the uh, the Umbreon that I was using and the Umbreon that I have on my team now, and get to see them be proper proper used at like full capacity, full power. Even if I don't have their move sets like locked in place, that would still be something. So yeah, I might consider doing that. We will see how it goes. It's kind of weird that I'm actually looking forward to doing that again, of like breeding for the, the proper natures and all that, and getting the the IVs that I want. Because I remember how long it took. I'm trying to remember which one took the longest. I think, oddly enough, it was getting a, a pretty good Charizard that took the longest for just... Could not find the right combination of nature and, and IVs that I wanted. I ended up having like, I think, four boxes full in my PC that were all Charmanders, all the correct nature, and only one of them was like, yeah, the IVs are across the board, 
at worst, they're pretty good, and at best, they're as good as they can be. In a weird way, though, it is kind of fun to do, like, all that, all that research for it and try to get an optimal one. Because the joke is, like, right, of you're, you're taking the fun out of playing the game. But it, it is kind of fun in its own way for a, a mathematical numbers person like me of trying to optimize things like that. It's a, it's a different kind of fun, I'll give you that. It's very different from just playing through the main story. But it is fun to do, and it's also nice to watch the benefits play off of, like, both looking at the numbers and actually physically in the game when you're battling against somebody of saying, yeah, this genuinely is a lot stronger, like, I can actually tell the difference here. Whereas normally, most of the time, it's just you, if you're looking for a specific Pokemon, if you're looking specifically for a, a Butterfree, you just catch whatever Caterpie comes along first, and probably the only thought you would put into getting a different one is, oh, I caught one at level 2, but I know they can go up to level 5 here. I should start at level 5, so it will take me less levels to get to Butterfree. Which early game is entirely valid, of not wanting to sit there and having to get from level 2 to level 5 when you could just catch another one at level 5. And it would probably take you substantially less time to do so. Getting a call from old Jack. Good old Jackie Chan. wonder if he's having a bad day. That's probably a reference that will go over people's heads, but... I did watch Jackie Chan Adventures growing up, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. But I also watched, like, a lot of Jackie Chan movies growing up. Like, that was something my mom and I watched a ton of. Maybe this will sound weird, but when it came to, like, watching TV shows and movies and stuff, besides the quote-unquote already weird thing of, I didn't really watch that many TV shows or movies growing up. Um, whenever I would watch stuff with my mom, usually it's like, oh, if a kid's watching a show with an adult, you're gonna be watching a kid's show. But, like, we actually watched proper films. Like, obviously nothing with, like, huge violence or gore or anything like that, but... Watching films that were geared towards adults. Note that I did not say adult films. Films that are geared towards adults was something that we did pretty frequently. Because, remember, this is also before the era of a lot of places, because that would be the, the 2010s, typically, of places realizing that a lot of kids' shows and movies don't have something that the adults can enjoy in them. They don't have those, like, little references or nods or anything that can keep the adults engaged. Those didn't exist back when I was growing up. So, watching it would have been a chore. So it was kind of the, the balanced way of, like, you know, even if we do watch something that I would enjoy that you may not necessarily, we'll go and watch something that uh, you will enjoy. I might not as much, but I'll still enjoy it to some degree. And that also probably falls in line with a combination of A, being an only child, uh, and, you know, not watching things with siblings because there were no siblings with which to watch anything. And B, just getting along with people that were typically older than me, age-wise. Age wise. Would, as a kid, almost always prefer to hang out with the adults. I prefer having the more intellectually stimulating conversations. I don't even think that's an intelligence thing, I think it was just a... I don't want to talk about the same three things over and over, I don't really care. I've got prune skin! Oh no! Maybe you should get out of the water then. I don't know why that reminded me at work. Uh, at work yesterday. The, uh, the day staff that's there, because they live on campus with the, uh, the kids, I live at a place where essentially it's an area that kids can go to if they get displaced from their families due to like abuse, neglect, what have you. But because the day staff stays there on campus, they are like 
they have an apartment that's physically connected to the uh, the cottage where the kids will stay. And they've got kids of their own. <laughs> Apparently, one of them, I think they're youngest, they were like, yeah, you need to go take a shower. And for some reason, he thought that he me that meant he needed to get in the shower and stay in the shower until they told him to get out of the shower. I don't know why, but for whatever reason he did. So he was in the shower for like 45 minutes, like just in there. It's like, dude, if you're done, you can get out of the shower. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Little kids are just so hilarious sometimes, where it's like, what are you doing there, bud? I think I'm actually going to run from this fight and heal up Eevee, and at least for these wild fights, I do want to have it actually engaging here. Probably should heal up Crobat a bit as well. Let's do that real quick. That should be plenty for the time being. But yeah, it's just so weird to imagine just like showering for 45 minutes like that. At least that kid in particular, we've got one kid that will shower for like an hour straight. Like, it's amazing how much I forget because A, I didn't care and B, I'm not that age anymore. But it's amazing how much kids at that age will like put into their looks. So like, we've got one that will... She will quote unquote shower before going to bed. Her bedtime's supposed to be 10. Which means that she starts showering at 10, and she'll usually shower somewhere between 45 minutes to an hour and a half. Which, if you're thinking, wow, that's way too long. I agree, it is way too long. So she'll do that, and then go to bed, and then wake up, and then do the exact same thing. She'll shower for another, like, 45 minutes to an hour and a half, and I'm like, you change your bed sheets like, daily. You obviously don't have any problem with, like, making a mess or, like, bedwetting or anything like that. Like, how dirty do you think you're getting while you're laying there in bed, not moving out of your bed? Yeah, get that experience. Uh, I will keep Eevee until you send that Sea King out. No switch. Blanked out there. I was like, Astonish is the high damage one I've still got left here. No. <laughs> no, it's Wing Attack. Now I can use Astonish. Chip off that last little, little bit there. I said this in the actual project, and it holds true here as well. I need to figure out what poison move I'm going to end up putting on the final Crobat that I have, because through leveling up, I don't remember what poison moves it gets. I know it's it's part poison, so you would think that it would get something. Like, I would expect to even poison sting, but it doesn't seem to have that happen. I'm not sure why. Yeah, I'm going to run from that fight as well and heal again. I had to look that up, though, because I'm actually very curious now. Does it learn? I mean, I'm looking at Zubats here, not... Uh... It's saying yes, Zubat does... If that's the case, let me take a look at Crobat and see if I missed that one. Poison Fang was the um, the move in question. So now it gets it at 39. So it does get one. I thought it learned Air Slash. Oh, okay, so it learns the Air Slash later on. That was Air Cutter I was thinking of. Yeah, I would keep Wing Attack over Air Cutter. Air Slash, that choice might be a little more difficult. So yeah, only gets one. Only gets Poison Fang. That's a bit surprising. 
actually. I would have thought it would have gotten at least one more move. Like I said, particularly Poison Sting, maybe Toxic, like, something other than just one. But, alright. Not complaining, just a little confused, that's all. Usually if something's got a main type on it, it'll learn at least, like, three or four moves of that type. Yeah, just keep keep sending out those toxic spikes, man. I'm not switching out. Not if you're just gonna let me win that fight. No way. I'm cool to just keep on trucking. Hello. The waves are wild here. They tire you out as you swim. Yeah, they probably do. Used to swim it as a kid all the time growing up. Loved doing it. Now it's just like there's nowhere really to... Because I don't live near the ocean, for reference's sake. But even barring that, all of the pools that are near me... Like, there's one in my apartment complex, but it's A, crowded by kids, B, pretty small, and C, it's not well taken care of. And I'm not in the mood to get multiple bacterial infections from it. And the places that are kept, like, decently well... Which, granted, like, they're still... I wouldn't say public pools, like, you have to pay to get into them, but, like, even the ones that are paid decent well, the price of admission of getting in is just not worth going swing. Like, even if you went three times a week, it just wouldn't be worth that price of admission. It's a lot. It's kind of ridiculous, honestly. I get that upkeep for a pool is quite a bit, and especially with a lot of traffic, but even so... It's just not something I do as frequently. I still enjoy doing it. Like, when I get the chance to, I mean, I absolutely love doing it. I'm hoping that, potentially, if we, uh, or when we do the trip with a bunch of friends of going over to the UK next year, if there's any time where people are like, hey, I kind of want to go swimming, then hopefully, hopefully that will be an option. Robat survives by the skin of her teeth. Get you back up to full here. Perfect. And keep on keeping on. You can see now why I said, like, Kulava's not going to get a lot of opportunity to shine here for a little bit. Evie became confused. Oh, don't worry, I'm always a little bit confused as well, Evie. It happens. That happened yesterday while I was at work. I wasn't even, like, there for that long. I usually keep, like, a headphone in while I'm working on stuff. But I can still hear what's going on around me, obviously. And, like, I'd only been there for, oh, I don't know, like, maybe ten minutes? And hadn't put my headphones in. I was like, where did I put my headphones? I swear I just set them down somewhere and I can't find them. And it's like, not only had I not put them down somewhere, I forgot I hadn't even, like, taken them out. They were still there. <laughs> like, jeez, dude. Get your brain checked. Can't remember anything. Yeah, keep lowering my speed. See if I care. I've got the anime or the attack priority with quick attack here. Oh, really? So now we gotta wait for it to actually stay asleep for a reasonable amount of turns. All right. There we go, critical hit, perfect. We're at the town now, it's just to the left, but we did miss some trainers, so I'm gonna 
run to the town long enough to heal, and then we'll come back and take care of the rest of those. <clears throat> Ah, there we go. Finally got all those power points and hit points back. That is one of the things I, I've always truly appreciated about, like, both the first playthrough of, like, you know, playing any Pokemon game for the first time, new player, new game, but also just going through the world the first time. It's just that sheer and utter relief of making it to a town in particular, after you've been going through a route that's been going for a very long time, or, like, spanned multiple routes, or anything like that. Where it's just like, oh, we finally made it, we're, we can finally go and heal. It's like, sure, you've got the, you know, all the items, the potions, the ethers and whatnot, but... You've only got so many of those to go around, right? Especially with the stuff like the ethers, you really don't want to use those unless you absolutely have no choice. I do my best to not accidentally, you know, do the classic... Uh, there we go. To do the classic, oh, I'll save it for an emergency, and then literally that emergency just never comes up, and therefore it never gets used. But I also don't want to just, like spam them on a route when it's completely feasible that I could just turn around and go back. And once you get fly, then it's essentially a moot point, because you can just fly back to any town and it'll drop you off literally right in front of the center. Dude, how did you miss? I thought quick attack at 100% accuracy. Well, I'm gonna have to switch you out now. And if that quick attack connects, provided it's a critical hit, it's not gonna do enough. It's a sad day when you're losing to a quillfish. Oh, you've been using Minimize, that's why. I was like, dude, what's going on here? This is why having that Umbreon, in particular with Faint Attack, would be nice. Because then it won't miss. <laughs> Man, I thought for a split second there, I thought for a split second we were about to see Umbreon. Oh, right, I need to get rid of that poison. I don't want Eevee feigning. switch out Eevee for this fight, so that should be okay. Oh, I went too many squares over. There we go. Hello. Hey, Knight, Staryu gathered you. Yeah, Staryu's a pretty good one. Unfortunately, I can't use it because that's a Gen 1 Pokemon, so it's not part of the team I can use. Which, granted, I can use it for, like, my non-final team. If I want, like, a battle team of six, then anything goes. I can put in repeats, I can put in anything that's not from Gen 2. All that's fair game. It's just for my final team. Once again, that's what you're seeing in the bottom right is final team. Which, granted, two of those still need to evolve, but we'll get there. We'll get there. I think once I get all of them evolved, which will probably, I would wager, will likely be at latest by the end of next episode. I mean, yeah, I would assume it would be before the Elite Four that I would have those. I might put, like, in brackets and then put some additional Pokemon in there of, like, this is teams just for a battle team. That way we're not just having half the, the screen left there. And, you know, we can put in more than just six. You know, I can interchange one of saying... Oh, I don't want to polyrath. I'll swap it out for, uh, I don't know, uh, an 
Arbok. I don't know. Think, trying to think of the first thing that came to mind. I'm not going to risk... Well, no, I have to because I can't get out of that because I'm... Oh, I guess I can with Runaway. I was going to go to my bag to use a potion, but that works too. I guess it is like a Runaway without fail. The only real way it can fail is if it's a trainer battle because you can't run away from those. Uh... I probably should bite the bullet and just kill all these with Eevee. hurting itself in the confusion over and over. That was a critical hit with Constrict. Are you sure about that? Alright then. Oh, well, Constrict isn't very strong at base power, if I remember correctly. It's like 20. I wonder what is the strongest move at, like, it's set number damage. Something that still actually does do damage, and I'm not counting things like Will-O-Wisp or Toxic, where like, yeah, it technically does do some damage. One that's actually got a number attached to it. It's probably 20. I can't think of anything lower than that, but there might be something out there that's lower. Not sure. Most of like the Tackle, Scratch, Pound, all the stuff you get on your starters are 30 or 35. Maybe 40. But there's definitely stuff at 20 for sure. But I, I can't even recall. And you know, actually, I think stuff like Fire Spin might be 15. So there might be a 15. There probably is a 15 in there. But I don't think there's anything lower than that. Well, just keep quick attacking. If it ain't broke, don't fix it can beat this last one. We can at least push you up to 28 and that'll get you very close to being able to learn Bite. And then I'll be able to use you proper instead of having to keep tagging you out every five seconds. Very nice. How are our stats looking here? Looking at predominantly special defense. Well, that's fitting for an Umbreon. Lowest is physical defense, though, which is not very fitting for an Umbreon. Is that cool? Will you switch Pokemon? No. I thought he was out. I guess he did have one more. Yeah, if we're looking at a special defense speed, that's more of an Espeon type build than an Umbreon. But again, with natures and all that stuff, we can fix that issue with no problem. I'm going to go ahead and use this repel just to, like, do a quick run around the area. Very... Oh, there was a rock there. I'm like, why can't I go up? Yeah, I was going to check and make sure there's no more trainers here. There is one more. Which, like, if we miss one or two, it's not the end of the world, but every little bit helps. Very nice, very nice. That said, despite having Eevee at almost 30, I don't have any plans to use Eevee in this upcoming gym at all. This is going to be predominantly a Quilava gym, which... It, it did succeed in knocking out all the trainers, but I had to go back and heal it after every single fight. It was getting knocked around pretty bad. It was succeeding, but it was cutting it a little close. And I did have to pull out Golbat ultimately to take out the gym leader, which I figured was probably going to be the case, you know. If the gym trainers are giving you trouble, then obviously the gym leader is only going to be more difficult, I would hope. Alright, 
Let's do a few quick things before we head into the gym, other than healing, of course. We've got one other thing we need to do. Well, two other things we need to do. Actually, that's wrong as well. We have one other thing we should do, and one thing we need to do. One is getting the medicine. The other is I'm gonna very quickly put Geodude in the PC. Don't feel bad, I will get back to you in probably about a minute and a half, give or take. But I do want to go pick this up while I'm thinking about it, and I need the empty spot for it. There's quite a few, and by quite a few I mean I can think of at least three, but that still seems like quite a few. Times in this game where, like, someone will just hand you a Pokemon. We're not talking trade it, but, like, just cases like this of, well, here, could you look after this for me? Like... Bill does it with the Eevee, she does it here with this, a Pokemon. Which, in case you're curious as to what it was, it's a Shuckle. Which she named Shucky. I feel like that's a, like, derogatory term or something. Yeah, very high in defenses, not that great across the board elsewhere. It is specifically meant to be a wall and nothing more. I'm not going to use it personally. I've already got, like, one wall with Umbreon, and I kind of don't like having too many of those on the team. But I also have said that, like, each of my teams... Uh, obviously, between Fire Red, Leaf Green, and this game, they're going to be very different battle style-wise as well. Even thinking ahead to, like, what would I use for Gens 3 and 4, those are both going to be different from 1 and 2 and each other as well, so... Besides the obvious of, no duh, they're going to be different Pokémon, I definitely feel like even combat-wise I'm going to have four very different teams throughout the first four Gens. Black and white, I can't even imagine what I would use for a team just yet, but that's very far down the line from now, so I shouldn't worry about it too much. What's this house? Oh, the photographer, that's right. Yeah, we don't need him. Let's just go and get this. Well, I know Pokemon's in trouble. I got it, this ought to do the trick. Obtained the secret potion. My secret potion is a tad too strong. I only offer it in emergency. Well, it's not so much of an emergency that we can't go tackle Jim, so... Don't don't beat yourself up too much. Alright, the fighting gym. The more reason not to have Eevee for this gym is obviously they will not do well against the normal type. The dude's not here to give you any info on this, which is kind of weird, but... For the record, if you're handling fighting Pokemon at this point in the ser uh, at this point in playing through the game, flying is probably your best bet type-wise against them. Uh, stay away with normal, and also I guess technically steel, but you're probably not using steel at this point. So. He's getting pumped. He's taking a poop. Oh, he strained too hard. Well, sometimes these things happen. Hello. Let your fists do the talking. Uh, yeah, let's see how far that gets you through an airport. Yes, these are a little bit lower level than what I remember. Not, like, super low level. I was expecting, like, pretty much right at 30. But that might be the Steel-type gem that I'm thinking of. And it's also possible that this trainer just happens to be one of the lower levels. Yeah, this one's gonna take three shots for sure. Or maybe not. Or I could get a critical hit. Alright. After I said he was getting knocked around quite a bit in the uh, the versus run, Wild's just taken out the left-hand side of the gym, and I don't even need to go back to heal. 
granted, that was because they were using things like Leer and Focus Energy rather than physically attacking me, but point still stands. I am curious to see next episode how Icarus will do against these gems, because I think there's definitely the potential for her to be a little too underleveled here. Really? You're gonna go with... Alright. You finally attack me and you, you pick Fire Punch against a Fire type? I mean, Ice Punch isn't much better. Surely you gotta have something else. Alright then. I was thinking, like, Karate Chop, Cross Chop, Low Kick, Sky Uppercut, Seismic Toss. It, surely you could have had something else. But yeah, I, I don't know how Icarus will do here. It'll be very interesting to see. It also depends on like what she's committed to for Pokemon at that point. If she is going to go with... Uh, Togepi as a whole, probably best to get that Togepi evolved into a Togetic very quickly to give it that flying subtype. A, to give it flying moves to work with, and B, to also cover the normal type weakness so it'll just, uh, it'll just even out to being an even damage. Croconaw would do fine, I guess. It wouldn't do great or poorly type-wise. Thank you, Windows Defender. It's time for you to leave. Goodbye. I don't need you. Go on. Wait. And as for what else she'd use, I don't know. Even though we keep the physical copies of the games at my apartment, no, I don't cheat or anything like that. And go and look at her Pokemon and be like, oh, I wonder what she's, what she's got going on here. Also, like, even when we are playing, I can see the screen, so I could just look up. Yeah, I gotta send out Crobat, don't I? Don't really have any other options here. Adios, monkey man. I got shattered. Nice. Alright, that just leaves a gym leader. I feel like it's been a while since my mom has called in game. I feel like after this gym bat or the gym fight is over here get the feeling she will be doing so. Yep, heal them all up. Alright, let's see how this goes. This is the case, as I recommend with your happiness evolutions, if you're taking them into a gym fight. They are, of course, important to have in that for the happiness part of it, but be sure to also save so that if they do get knocked out, you can, of course, reset and you don't have to lose those happiness points. It's weird that it's taken us, like, almost two hours to get to a gym, but, like, again, I talked about this in the verses. You basically do these gyms, like, back-to-back. -back. Like, you do this, you get fly, you fly back, you give them the medicine, and then you go fight the next gym. Like, it's very, very just one after the other. I guess technically, if you... Well, no, because I think you have to go through the lighthouse first in order to talk to her, otherwise the guy won't give you the medicine. I was gonna say, I guess technically you could be doing that and then fight the trainers in the lighthouse, but A, there's that, and B, you'd probably want to fight the trainers in the lighthouse anyway just to get the extra experience for taking on... No, don't miss! That would have been a really good attack to block, and you just took it and died immediately. I'm gonna have to try to bring him back, but we'll see how Crobat does. 
Oh, Crobat missed two. Perfect. He must have used double team 36 times while I wasn't looking. Yep, there's your Hyper Potion. Get that out of the way now. Freaking double team weenies! I'd just like everyone to know if you are the type of person to spam double team, we all hate you. Literally everybody else hates you for this. Like, it's not fun, it's not funny, it's just not. Nobody's impressed with the stunt that you're trying to pull. Sacrifice a couple of them here. With any luck, if I have to sacrifice Krabby since it is level 20, I might be able to withstand a hit. I'll be missing 1 HP, but that's okay. Alright, round two. If you were going to heal a second time, you would have done it by now. So now it's just a matter of waiting for an attack to connect. I feel like after he damages me again, probably with Rock Slide here, if my next two attacks don't connect, I'll probably just reset, because at that point, like, I'm wasting too many resources just to try to get this guy to the point where I can hit him. There we go. All you have to do is threaten to reset the machine. That will usually be enough. Honestly, I don't think it's worth the sacrifice of trying to switch out. I think it's better off just going for it. Whether he tries to spam double team or not is kind of irrelevant. Okay. Oh, I was going to say, so I only need to make that hit one more time, but no, not anymore. Oh, and you got a critical too. That's nice. I'm going to undo that damage that you just did since you got that critical hit. It seems only fair. Oh look, another critical hit. I'm gonna undo that damage too, because you definitely don't need to be getting double critical hits. That's not a high critical hit move, and therefore I will not accept what you're doing. I would like to see how much body slam would actually do when it connects normally. That seems more reasonable. Alright. Now that he's done getting his rocks off over there. Not yet. Yeah, hopefully not yet. Dude. Please. I'm really tempted. Do I have like a full restore? I'd really be tempted to use it right now. I have to hit it three times. Alright, uh... Do it again, and then we'll probably use a turn to get rid of that. Well, I don't know. It's getting rid of the paralysis worth it. It'll probably just throw it right back on. Yeah, he'll probably just throw it right back on. It, it's likely not worth it. Okay, he's got no more potions. There we go. Excellent. I really thought we were going to have to reset on that one, especially after all that double-team nonsense. Said it in the verses and I'll say it again. I thought, like, the fighting gym would all be all about, you know, like, you, you know, honor and things like that, and then it's just like, no, we're just going to spam double-team. 
We'll do the least honorable thing imaginable. But we get Focus Punch, which I will probably never use, especially not on a team where I'm fighting Icarus, because she doesn't really do status effects and stuff like that. So Focus Punch would not be a very good move to have. And there's Fly at long last. And sure enough, there's my mom calling me. I did guess that correctly, at least. I do need to remember to change the in-game clock, because it is slightly off. It's only off by nine minutes, if you can believe it, but that's not quite the right time. But that's something I can just do at another point. It's not that big a deal. Alright. Fly, I'm actually okay with the time for the time being. I'm okay with giving that to Crobat. Here, come on. Well, nobody else has wings. Like, I don't know what I was expecting. Sometimes you get weird stuff where it's like, oh, this Pokemon can actually learn that move. But yeah, I'm okay with giving up Astonish, personally. I know I'm not using Confuse very much either, but to be perfectly honest, it probably won't last. It might, but ultimately I wouldn't be upset one way or the other if it stayed or went. Yeah, we've got some flight options. The first thing I want to do, since I did mention the Apricorns, we can go back and pick up what we've got right now. Truthfully, I don't even remember which ones I gave him. I think I gave him the pink ones? The fast balls. Which is different from quick ball, so it's probably on Pokemon that are typically speedy. Five. Yeah, I was thinking probably do the black ones next, because I know these are for heavy. So these are for Pokemons that have a higher weight. Alright. Like I said, I'm not too fussed about them, so just whichever I had the most of made the most sense. I don't think we need to fly to anywhere else, like, immediately, so... At the very least, I don't want to have to wait, make this poor Ampharos wait any longer than it needs to. Since I did, did say I want to, like, limit to two gyms per episode, I might get to the next town. I might do some, like, sort of side stuff. I do want to catch a, a ditto and go ahead and have it in the daycare just to get that part of the process done. Will that medicine cure Amphi? No. No, it won't. Yay, it's all happy now. I do like Ampharos. I used I used uh, Ampharos quite a bit in Pokemon Coliseum. I know it's kind of slow for an electric type that's pretty rare, but it is it is a Pokemon that I quite like. Good news also about doing the back-to-back -back gym battles means that... Oh, right, I forgot they call you now about the Safari Zone being open. The other good news, though, is that uh, Eevee will get to participate in what the game considers key battles back-to-back, -back, which is good. So we uh, at least have that. There's 
That's not what I meant to do. Probably should. Yeah, yeah, we'll keep BB out in front for now. Oh, that's the way out of town. We don't want to go that way. We want to go pick up whatever our mom left us. Would you leave us, Mome? The Moonstone. Oh, that's right. I feel like I've been consistently getting those. All three runs I've had of this game, I've been given a Moonstone. So I, I don't know if that's like a fixed thing. But at the rate that I'm getting them, I wouldn't be shocked if it was. Any junk in my bag I just don't need here? There's probably got to be at least one thing. Nope, nothing in the... the X items department. Fast Pokemon. I figured. Alright, nothing else for the time being. Even the game realized after a while, like, oh, you're not you don't want these X attacks, X defends, all that stuff. We'll just not give those to you. <laughs> it's almost like they knew. I do wonder if I'd come here. Like, actually into the gym before I went and helped Jasmine with the whole Ampharos thing. I do wonder if I would have been able to fight those gym trainers. I would assume not. It probably just wouldn't let you into the building. Like, maybe? But I don't really know, actually. Can't say for sure. Alright, Eevee, you've participated in this battle. Let's stand aside and let our actual team leader here work their magic. That's gonna be a crit, isn't it? No, that's normal damage. Alright. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to sacrifice here. If it's gonna do 60 damage in one hit and paralysis means I can't go first. should have saved before I did this fight, and I foolishly did not. It is weaker in special defense. Okay, good to know. I was about to say, surely you gotta be have something you're able to do against a, a ground type. It can't be that weak, potentially. Alright, so since it's special, Ember is probably the better choice here. Breakthrough, yes. But yeah, I'm gonna have to switch again and, and sacrifice here. You, you will probably be seeing that happen to every Pokemon other than my Eevee. I'll probably have to do it every single time. Oh, no, it's not. I can't count. I could have sworn that was 30, not 20. For what its health was at. In order to have any shot here, I've got to get rid of that paralysis. Ooh, it actually survived, though. That's good. I don't know if 
eight health is gonna make a difference, but it might, so. Fingers crossed it will. I'm pretty sure Steelix is gonna be the same, right? Of Yeah, special defense is weaker than physical defense. I figured, like, with most steel types, that's almost always going to be the case, but sometimes there's some outliers in there. Ooh, that's not good. I mean, by all means, like, waste your turn on Sandstorm. That's probably the least damaging thing you can do to me. Oh, and he's got a Citrus Berry and still got the ability to heal. Yeah, this is going to be a problem. Man, if that had missed, though, it's, a, like, just low enough of a point where they uh, probably aren't going to heal. Because they probably would have done it that turn, honestly. Nope, don't need that. Thank you. Depending on how much damage this does, there's one other thing I'm going to do. I was about to say, that might buy me some time. I know that's going to, like, almost assuredly mean they heal, but it might buy me some time, and that might be more important right now. That might heal Steelix, but it's also not going to give any... Um, I just realized something. It's also not going to give any... Issues with the status ailments. There we go. I don't know why that half the screen wasn't showing. I didn't move that around at all between episodes. I don't know why it was doing that, but I just noticed on my screen that I couldn't see its full name. Alright, so it's still confused. So at this point, we're better off, for the time being, just trying to... Yeah, work with the flinch confusion here. It's going to be a slow, painful process, but if I can stall it, then that would help. Man, if that sandstorm hadn't been there, but oh well. So I don't... She might have one more potion, but I don't think she can use it on Steelix. Lava's also faster. This is also confused now. Well, it was. Yeah, I think that might be the end of it. I was hoping that confusion would last one more turn. If it had hurt itself in the confusion... Yeah, yeah. If it had hurt itself in the confusion even once, then... Oh, it might be worth it. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I think it's worth it. I'm going to reset. I think it's worth it. I know that means we have to redo the fight with uh, the fighting gym leader, but I think it's worth it. I'm just hoping he won't spam double t- well, I mean, he only used it, like, once the first time. Because I only lost one turn by switching out. And that one turn was enough for him to dodge my attack, like, four times, so... I need him to have all the luck in the world, and by all the luck in the world, I mean all the bad luck in the world. Yeah, because he, he would have only used it once. That would have been it. And yeah, it's still going to miss. And so he's going to do it again. And I'm still going to miss. So he's going to do it again. So I'm still going to miss. So he's going to do it again. Like, just... It's the 
only upside now is he's not going to do it this turn because he's going to heal. And miss again, then miss again. I feel like in particular for the evasion stuff, like, there needs to be a point where, like, if you haven't done it after two turns that, like, your evasiveness disappears some. Like, the stat starts going back to normal. Because otherwise, like, I'm just going to be sitting here till I'm 35, not being able to hit this guy. Okay, that's one. Because it's not as big a deal whenever it's like, oh, they're lowering your accuracy, because in most cases, provided they haven't used something like Mean Look, you can just swap out, and then that status is gone. It's not there anymore. But in this case, he would have to withdraw, which why would he do that? Yep, I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna shift into Eevee and then I'm gonna switch into a sacrificial one to heal Crobat and then I'll switch Crobat back in. Go Geodude. I almost said go my son, but Geodude is a female on my team, so nope. Yeah, do the full Hyper Potion, why not? Might as well. Alright. All we need is for this to go decently well, and none of this, like, we're just gonna randomly decide to miss with a perfectly good move whenever he's activating Focus Punch, which is probably what he's about to do right now. That'd be the smart thing to do if he was going to use it. Yep. Oh no, he went for Surf. Okay. That went way better than last time. Yikes. He wants to learn Bite. Yes, please. Please. Get rid of Growl. It's still not a great move set because it's almost level 30, but it's at least something that can, like, survive in a wild encounter now between quick attack and bite. It's still better than what we had. Thankfully that went much more smoothly this time. I'm definitely going to be buying more revives and whatnot. I, oh, do I want to grind for... I don't know if I want to grind for levels or not. Not like for a lot, but just a few. Because I'm going to be cutting it close here. I do have one other option, though. I might do that, but I'll talk about that when I get back to the previous town. Yep, you bought an item for me. Thank you. That's going to be the Moonstone. I guess we'll find out if it's the same item. That would be funny if it wasn't the Moonstone anymore. I don't really need it for anything, but sadly you can't use those to evolve your Eevee into an Umbreon in this game. Alright, we'll use Fly and get rid of Astonish. Which, considering that it might have kept me alive in that fight against Steelix, I guess it was the correct move to keep Confuser, eh? It just didn't last as long as it possibly could have, which was just a luck-based thing. Okay, we'll redo the Apricorns. Yeah, I am 
curious to see if this strategy I've got worked. It might be why they... I don't know. It'll be hard to say. I guess we'll find out how well or poor it works once I try it. But we'll find that out in a couple minutes. Hi, Kurt. How's the uh, Street Breed team going? Or I guess the Teku by this point. I do wonder how he, like, turns these into Pokeball. It, probably in the anime, if they ever ran across him, they probably show at least to some degree how he actually does. Because they're already kind of like round spheres, right? So maybe it's just figuring out how to put the electronics in it that allow it to catch things. shopping before I forget about it. Is it still a moonstone? It is still a moonstone. Granted, I didn't have to use any in the fight on, uh, on the fighting gym. I don't plan to use those max repels, but in case I need to do some backtracking through an area for whatever reason. With fly, that's a little bit less likely, but these will be a good insurance for not having to worry about that. Imagine if I did have to go and clear out all the trainers again and, like, forgot about it. If that had been the case, I probably would have just taken the L. I'd be like, I don't want to go refight ten different trainers. Like, this was fast enough that I knew it wouldn't take nearly as long. Plus, not only do we not have to fight the trainers in the lighthouse, we don't have to fight the gym trainers either. We're to be playing games that all that both involve lighthouses. Maybe I should be playing Bioshock Infinite too. Nah, probably not. I like Infinite, but I'm just not in the mood to play it right now. But Wind Waker was the other one. In case anyone was curious, I was thinking of restoring the lighthouse in Windfall Island, which is like one of my favorite parts of the last. I guess last third of the game? That feels... Rough. There's so much side questing. I guess for the main story it would be like the beginning of the last third. And it's optional to do, but it's always really cool to put the lighthouse back and then also get to physically see it out on the Great Sea. You can still actually see the lighthouse. It's one of those things I always appreciated about Wind Waker. Hi, Mom. Working hard? You're an olivine. Is that where the big lighthouse is? Did you take a look? By the way, you've saved up this much. Do you want to keep on saving? Yes. I guess this is the first game, at least, if we're counting this as Gen 2. I think Gen 4 does it as well. Could be wrong about that, even though this is a Gen 4 game. Of, you can call your mom, and depending on where you are, she'll give you hints of, like, essentially, hey, you should go check this area out. You should go see what's over here. I know Black and White does that, but I don't remember about if um, Diamond and Pearl does. Oh, right, I did say I was going to, like, attempt one other thing just to see if it would make a difference. 
almost forgot. The one thing I was going to do to see if it helped... ...was I was thinking, wasn't it fitting that they gave you the option to pick up a Pokémon... ...that is essentially just built to be a wall and could stall very well... Right before two gems, they're kind of high leveled. Given its very high defenses, it might be able to last quite a bit longer against whatever I need it to last against. Which will probably be that Steelix, but we'll see. The refight against the fighting gym went way better, so maybe the refight here will go way better. I don't need to save that many times. I'm Jasmine, I'm the Clang Steel type. You know about the Steel type? They're very hard, cold, sharp, and really strong. Yeah, I've used quite a few in my day. Back when uh, I did. Well, I didn't do a project of it, but back when I first played Diamond and Pearl, uh, I had a Steel type for my starter. A part Steel type by the end of it, anyway. And it was very helpful throughout that journey. And there's one other steel type that I've used pretty consistently as well, but I don't want to spoil what that is. Oh good, it missed. Very, very much approve of that. I really didn't need both of those things. Alright, we're off to a good start. Switch. Sorry, my adorable little Sandshrew, I'm afraid you were here for nothing more than cannon fodder. That's the paralysis gone. Oh, cool, it's attack mist. That gives me another turn. Awesome. If I actually read this correctly. Okay, so that bring me up to 80. I'm okay with missing one point. That's hopefully not going to be the difference. Now that I've said that, it probably will be. I'll probably have to switch out and sacrifice a few more, but we'll see what happens. If it could get nailed by being burned, that would actually help a lot, both in dropping its attack and slightly lowering its health. No, I think I'm gonna have to take the L on taking the damage here. I think it's worth inflicting the damage. If he had missed, that would have been perfect, but... Right, let's see how this works. I'm curious now. We'll see exactly how well this thing can hold up. <laughs> Not very. Good to know. That's super effective damage, man. All right. I'm not going to make the mistake of confusing it this time, because that's what caused him to heal himself. It did help in some sense, but it hurt in others, so I'm going to try something different rather than do the same thing and expect a different result. to be able to get that leer out even if I had it wouldn't have made a difference because Ember's not a physical attack, so it's fine. And we'll see what happens. Ooh, perfect, critical hit. Didn't have to worry about if it would do enough or not. Jeez, that Steelix gave a lot of health. 
or a lot of EXP, rather. I know it was, like, five levels higher than me, but, or six at the time, but still. Hey, there's the burn I was looking for earlier. Alright, all I need is just one hit. There we go. Yeah, both of those fights went way better that second time around. Alright, that is six badges down, and two with an asterisk to go. I think we get called by Elm at this point now. Oh, we actually don't. Okay, well, I'll go back and heal first. I guess they just expect you to fly back and then head east out to the next town. And yeah, actually that does make sense because Team Rocket doesn't take over the radio station until after that full after that point. Given where we are now. Oh, right, I need to go and get my Geodude back in case I need Rock Smash or whatever I put on it. At some point I will figure out the ideal combination of which two Pokemon will give me all those HMs, but hopefully by the time that I need it, I'll have more options for Pokemon available, and at that point I will be able to figure out a combination where I can get two to have all eight of the HMs I need. Alright. Let's see. Sure, we'll accept the cookies. Actually, the one I meant to click on. I meant to go here. Always Bulbapedia. Here we go. Alright, I'm looking for root... 34. Okay. No. I didn't mean to click on the thing for... <laughs> I clicked on Roots 34, but I clicked on the Roots part, so it's like, oh, did you want to know what a Root is in Pokemon? I'm like, no, that's not quite what I'm looking for. Okay, so it's a 5% encounter rate. I can get it anywhere on that Root. Okay. I'm going to check my Eevee's happiness, too, while we're here. It's probably at the stage below what... Golbat was. I get the feeling that it really trusts you. Oh, we might actually be pretty close then. feeling it really trusts you. Yeah, 200 to 249, so I'm pretty sure that means it'll... The happiness curve has reached 220 already. Yeah, so it's pretty close, actually. Those two battles did make a difference. Alright, well, let's work on, I guess, getting Eevee some experience, if nothing else while we hunt for that ditto. Tackle is probably fine at this point, given the level disparity. I 
guess if Drowsy is a tiny bit bulkier, we can go for the super effective move if this doesn't work. Oh no, not my tackle. Well, it is nice that it's on the same route that the... the daycare is. You can also see why if I was going for the full Joan Codex, which again, I probably will do. But you can see why I would probably cut out the hunting for each and every single Pokemon in the grass, especially if it's a low encounter rate like this, that I might just cut it out and not show that part of the streaming. Or potentially, one of the things I've been meaning to do is getting the audio set up for having CoComs through Discord. So that would always be one option of at least having somebody to talk to, whether they're big into the Pokemon series or not. The, the scyther of this hunting them down now that I'm actually looking for one it's gonna take a hot minute here it did say it was available all times a day but it's again it's only a 5% encounter rate so I wasn't exactly expecting to run into it on the first or second encounter here I didn't even know you could find it here actually Apparently there's a secret area of the route accessible now. After getting Surf. Interesting. I'm just reading through the route description now. I should check, well, nah, it's probably not, eh. If you give Picnic or Gina, how fitting it's Gina, uh, your number, sometimes she'll give you a Leaf Stone, and she's on this route. So, if you're looking for one of those, that might be a potential option for you. If I don't catch this, it's not a big deal. It's just that these things like to teleport away. Which we will probably be seeing right now. Yep. I say they like to teleport away, it's the only move that they have, so it's all they can do. But for the record, if you're having trouble catching them still, if you've got something that can learn or does no mean look, you can of course trap it from leaving, and then at that point teleport's just gonna keep failing, so there's literally nothing they can do at that point. Other than, I guess, struggle eventually, but they would just be forced to keep using teleport and failing until it ran out of power points. You should easily be able to catch it by then. Wouldn't be that hard. Well, if nothing else, even if they're not the ideal Eevees, at least we're doing the Eevee training for Eevee. By defeating all of these very weak Pokemon. I think I can pretty safely say, whether we catch it before we end the stream here or not, which, if I catch it early, there's still a few other things I want to do. But I will probably catch one... Well, I don't know. I, was, I might wait till after the next episode of this. I don't remember if Eevee can breed with Ditto straight away or if you have to have it evolve. That might be something I have to check. But if that's the case, I might go ahead and start on working on getting the ideal Eevee for an Umbreon. just to, like, start 
pushing that. But I might also be waiting to do another episode of this until we do another episode of Versus, because if I'm going to be trying to do two badges in one sitting at this point, I would be ahead if I did another two badges, because that would put me at all eight, and I've only got seven on the Versus file. I'll be curious if we do manage to get EB to 30. I think that's what level it would get to. Yeah, to 30 by the end of these, if it'll be enough to evolve it. I don't think winning a non-key battle gets at anything, so... I can check. I've still got the list right here. Um, I think I've already talked about this one before, but for the record, Raising Happiness, walking 256 steps with the Pokémon in your active party. Giving it vitamins, meaning HP up, Carbos, Iron, Protein, Calcium, Zinc, and PP up. Uh, using it in important battles, which is Gym Leaders, the Elites, and the Champion. I don't know if there's more, that's the ones that it lists. Uh, leveling up the Pokémon. And the Haircut Brothers in Goldenrod City can raise its happiness between 1 and 10 points, depending on their reaction after the haircut. But if it needs to get to 220, and it's at bare minimum based on what the person said, 200, for letting me know the happiness, it's entirely possible that this will be enough to push it to evolving into an Umbreon. Let's find out. Hey! Now I just gotta make sure that it's not evolving into an Espeon. Nope, that's definitely an Umbreon. Yay! Also, if I crash randomly, I accidentally clicked on opening Unity instead of clicking on my OBS tab, so I apologize for that. I will close it as soon as I possibly can. There we go. Hopefully that didn't stay on there for too long. It didn't pop up anything on your end, but I'm sure my CPU did not appreciate that. Alright, where are you? There you are. And... There we go. You did it! You evolved! I'm very proud of you. I'm around, it's pulling out the grass. Is that a euphemism? Alright, the game has been saved. Where is, out of curiosity... Oh, and Blackthorn. Okay. Blackthorn City is where the move relearner is. I'll have to check there. Not that I'm worried about anything in this area. Like, even if I was, now it's gonna have the same type of attack bonus from Bite, so... It's going to be even stronger in that regard. Oops, that's not the right... Yeah, it's right up there. Okay. Yep, got synchronized. Passes a burn, poison, or paralysis to the foe. That is a pretty good move, in my opinion. It's always nice whenever somebody... Like, whether they do a direct, I'm going to hit you with the status ailment, or they are just happen to get an additional effect of something, of just sending it right back their way is always a nice little plus. Yeah, screw it, I'm going to try to go full force on this Abra, just to try and catch it. I have no plans to use one on my team, especially now for the end, because even if I wanted to, I couldn't. Ah, well. Would have been nice to catch one, though. very pleasantly surprised, though, that I managed to get Umbreon that quickly by comparison to my actual file. I'm going to quickly switch windows. For reference's sake, obviously you can't see any of the screen. Oh, no, you can see mine now. Uh, 
for reference's sake, this is what our team currently looks like on our other file, so I still have the Eevee rather than the Umbreon, but I've got the Typhlosion rather than the Quillava. But I'm also farther ahead, so I don't- I expect to get Typhlosion at roughly the same time. There's still a route to go through, an event to go through, and a gym to go through before I would be at roughly the same area. And all the trainers that would be between that, so... I'll try to be using Quilava a fair bit more. Now I don't have to worry about the happiness evolutions, though, which is a nice little plus. That also means if I want to take the the Shell Bell off, or the uh, Soothe Bell off, and replace it with something else, I could. I think I'll leave it on Umbreon for now, because I just don't think I've got anything I'd replace it with. Actually, I think I might. There might be something I want to replace it with. If I've got it. Oh, I just have the two. Yeah, okay, I don't have it. There's somewhere you can find it. I was going to say the Quick Claw was, <clears throat> was what I was thinking of. Because of the three that I'm using in my team, obviously the slowest one is Umbreon. Crobat is super speedy and Typhlosion's no slouch either. All of the dogs are outside, even though I think they're actually inside. Sounds like they're inside and downstairs to the, if I'm facing my apartment from the, not the garage, from the parking lot, it would be to the right of me. But I'll take that over the sound of the child that's directly next door that was stomping around really loudly. Discord's usually able to mute that, but OBS is not quite as, as lucky, unfortunately. I wasn't planning on starting earlier, but I knew that she was making a lot of noise, like, about, up to about 15 minutes before I started, and I was like, uh, I don't know if she's gonna, like, tire herself out, because usually I hear a, a lot of stomping, followed by someone yelling to stop, followed by her crying, and then no more noise. It's probably fine, he said, lying through his teeth. Still no luck on this. I might quickly check what other routes Ditto can pop up on just to see if there's a higher chance somewhere else. Uh, put me way down here on this. Uh, right there. Route 35, it's a 4% chance, that's so obviously not better there. I don't think we're far enough to get to this route. No, I don't recognize that at all. That is a good percent chance, though, if we were that far, 41. So, where I am, at least currently in this point in the game, is the best chance I've got. Well, we'll keep going, then. When it does come to stuff, by the way, like picking up items, like stuff my mom sends me in game, which that shouldn't happen off screen because I'm not fighting trainers, but like any item picking up stuff like that, uh, if it's an item I got from somebody, I wouldn't do those. If it's something that I found, I would probably just write it down and be like, by the way, off screen, I found this, but I'm not going to actively go looking for items or anything like that. That really won't be an issue in this game, but it is something worth noting for Gen 3 in particular, because I'll probably have a Zigzagoon on my team for pickup, and for the HM stuff, but mostly for pickup. It will be tempting at the start of Gen 3, while I'm working on getting to the rest of my team, to just <laughs> have my starter and just load up on, on Zigzagoons, just take all the advantage of that pickup ability. Whether I will or not, who knows. That's still quite a ways away. 
because we're not even when we do finish the uh, main story of Hardworld Soul Silver, like once we get everything done outside of raising the teams, even despite that, we're not gonna just jump straight into Ruby Sapphire Emerald. We usually do at least two projects, I would say. I would say that would be the bare minimum is two projects between the two. Because bearing in mind, like doing all the the breeding and IV and EV training for six Pokemon does take quite a bit of time. Barring, you know, the other projects we're doing, family stuff, work stuff, all that other, all that other fun junk. tell if the dogs have decided if they're going to stop or not, and I'm not sure they're sure either. It was just tackle, I guess. It was a quick attack, but still. Not that it'll make a difference for what I'm doing with using quick attack, but I'm gonna go ahead and switch bite into the front position. Because obviously that's gonna be the move I'm using the most. It's the strongest power-wise by 20. It's also got same type attack bonus whereas the others have now lost their same type attack bonus. So obviously, Bite is the optimal move for strictly a damage purpose. Not that it'll matter on these guys, but also a flinch chance. Check real quick, too, while I've got it here. Hey, there's Ditto. Oh, it's just sand attack. Okay. Uh. I'm gonna just throw a regular Pokeball. I kind of want it to transform into Umbreon, because it'll get higher defense. And then I could probably risk tackling it. Of course, if it just catches as is, that would also work. Nope. What did it miss? It missed... Baby... Well, Baby Doll Eyes, maybe not. I don't know for sure on that one. Confuse Rain, Assurance, and Moonlight are all the ones that missed. Dark Pulse. Wow, this thing does not get a lot of physically attacking moves. Uh, as an Umbreon. Quick Attack at 10, Assurance at 25, Dark Pulse at 80, and Last Resort at 55. And that is it. I'm looking at the wrong generation here. Let me take another look. No, there's a little bit more here. Uh, starts with Tackle at 1 when it's born. Pursuit at 15, level 15. Quick Attack at 22. Faint Attack at 36. Assurance at 43. Last Resort at 50. So, 6 instead of 4. That's a little better. Yeah, here we go. This is going to be a lot easier to chip it down to a reasonable amount, rather than just trying to catch it as is. I'm gonna stop there, actually. This is only a level 10, it shouldn't need, like, a borderline Master Ball or anything. say that, and it's not catching here. Good news is because I'm also using Umbreon and it's built like an absolute wall, it's gonna take that ditto a long time to chip it all the way down to zero. It would probably sooner run out of moves than it would be able to do it. 
Well, maybe not, but it'd still be taking quite a bit of time. There we go. I didn't know about that. It can transform into anything. When it sleeps, it changes into stone to avoid being attacked. I didn't know about that part. Just love that goofy little grin on its face. The color on it also looks very different on your screen compared to mine, but that's probably just the lighting in general. It's much more of a, like, grayish-purple color on my end. Sorry, trying to think ahead here. I mean, I should go ahead and put the ditto in the, the PC. Or in the daycare, rather, not the PC. Oh, it's got an item. Shoot. Hold on. Gotta back out. Sorry. What's he got? Quick powder. Alright, well, I'll take it, I guess. See, here's the thing. If, let's say I work on getting the Umbreon, like, I would need to have way more money to get all the, the stat-boosting items as soon as I possibly could. Well, no, I don't need the stat-boosting items. It just makes it go by faster. I think I'll leave it as is for now. I'll... Uh, that's tough. Uh... Because the ideal way to do it would be a, to keep beating the Elite Four, right? And that would be the quickest way to make money. Maybe I don't work on that part of it for right now. Yeah, maybe I don't work on that part for now. But I've got the ditto and I've got it in there, so that's, at the very least, the uh, first step of that taken care of. I guess technically I should see if the Ditto's got decent uh, IVs as well. But at least I have a Ditto in there, so even if it's not the ideal one, I'll remember. Oh hey, we've got that taken care of. Alright, I think that is a good spot to stop for the evening. I don't think I'll do anything off-screen in terms of, like, the Brie. I might check that Ditto's IVs at some point and maybe try to catch another few and see if I can find a better one. I need to check how the breeding specifically works in Gen 4, so I'm not going to worry about it too much for the time being, but that's research that I'll do off-screen. For now, thank you all for watching. Uh, that's all I'm going to do for... The, uh, the Heart Gold on its own playthrough until we continue on Versus. So, there won't be any other videos until after that, but Versus will continue on Thursday. It's currently Tuesday, so it won't be too much longer between then and now. By that point in the game, I expect in the next, like, play session, I should definitely have all the badges, and theoretically, if I'm smart and careful enough, I should also have the Jonto Elite Four beaten by that point. If I've got them beaten, at that point I could definitely grind for infinite money and make the, the breeding process go by faster. But again, that's all research that I'll figure out at a later date. Until then, let's go and raid an NCS. What is he doing? Ah, he's doing Jackbox. Nice. That was a good choice. Ooh, but what to do for a raid message? And we'll probably just not do a, uh, not do a, a raid message. Well, what would I do for a raid message? I don't know. Uh, I'm 
got an idea. I've been watching his uh, playthrough of Sapphire recently. So we'll raid with a good old Tom Hanks Mudkip, because that was what he named his Mudkip was Tom Hanks. All right, so I will see you guys in a couple days for uh, proper verses for uh, Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Ah, oh, but he's on intermission. That's a shame. Oh, but he might be back.